to my fellow Americans. This evening, I come to you with a message of leave taking and farewell, and to share a few final thoughts with you, my countrymen. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. Three and a half million men and women are directly engaged in the defense establishment. The total influence, economic, political, even spiritual, is felt in every city, every state house, every office of the federal government. We recognize the imperative need for this development, yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. You have to realize this is one of the great presidents, great military leaders, on his way out the door at the end of his second term, he says, by the way, watch out for the military industrial complex. People know that he invented the phrase military industrial complex, but very rarely do you see the whole thing and realize how utterly strident his warning was. I think it's one of the most profound statements ever made by an American president. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. I will soon submit to Congress a request for $87 billion. Can the Secretary of Defense, can the Vice President, can this administration take the military to war to feed the greed of contractors? Private contractors are the second largest force in Iraq. They far outnumber all non-U.S. forces combined. They outsource the war to private companies to send the people in harm's way to make money. We're being told now that there's no way that uh, we're going to be told what it's going to cost until after you have begun military action. It depends on the assumptions. It depends on how long the war lasts. It depends on what, whether weapons of mass destruction are used. What we have done is we have taken estimates looking at different variables and said if, if this were the case on this variable and then on this variable, but there's so many variables that, that the numbers of possible point answers create a range that, that simply isn't useful. I'm just not going to get into any speculation about numbers. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We all know that the documentation on Yellow Cake from Niger was fake, but why doesn't anybody say who did it, who faked the document? Someone's got to say who is putting this intelligence out there and why, and, and I don't think that question's been answered, and maybe because the answer is known, and it's not a pleasant one. Who was it? that asked for this review of the Niger nuclear material question. It was the vice president. It is a federal felony. It's a crime to mislead and distort information and present it to the Congress. As president, I'm responsible for the decision to go into Iraq. The president and many of his senior officials defrauded the American public. And the conclusion about what you have to do about it is so clear that people don't even want to hear the underlying facts.